Hello, this is Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. It's March 29th in the early afternoon. Um, it's 70 something degrees. We had a cold front blow through last night and uh, bring our temperatures back down to, to normal. Um, but I wanted to chat with you a little bit today about uh, Serta Podiums. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of information about these guys online. And <clears throat> I've been growing them for four or five years now and figured I'd share my experiences with you and show you the, the different stages <clears throat> of growth here in the spring. And I've got a bunch of different examples and I will finish it off with uh, some blooms, which you can see here and just off camera over here. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so let's get started. So Certipodiums uh, are, are known from Florida and south into Brazil and um, are, are typically terrestrial. So um, I grow mine in a terrestrial mix that I mix up here um, at my place, and that's 50% sphagnum, 50% um, peat moss, not sphagnum, 50% peat moss and sand. And... It looks like this. It looks like dirt, because it is. Um, and so these guys will typically grow um, in very bright situations. Uh, there are some intermediate growing ones. I grow the hot, the hot lovers, of course. You know, here in Texas, it's very hot. And um, they, they really, really, during the active growing phase, they're heavy feeders. I water them every single day and they're typically dry uh, within 24 hours because I have them in full Texas sun with no shade from sunrise till about 2.30 and then the, the shade of the oak trees that you can kind of see behind me kicks in and so there's, they're still getting bright sun from about 2.30 to sundown um, but man they they love 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 the sun and heat so uh, you need to keep that in mind if you're growing these guys. They will, uh, they will not do well, and they will not bloom for you if you are unable to provide intense, intense light. Um, and uh, another downside of these guys is that they are well. Loving heat and sun is not a downside for me, but if 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 you're in a northern climate, it might be difficult to replicate. Uh, another downside for these guys if you don't have the space they can be space hogs so I'm sitting down uh, and this guy is as tall as I am um, the spike is well ahead of the leaves so <clears throat> what happens in the spring is you'll typically see a, a new growth come out and that it's it's very sharp and that new growth will kind of break into two and one will turn into a spike and one will turn into a new growth and the spike just goes crazy and then the new growth kind of makes its way up, you know, over the next couple months. In fact, I have a Certipodium punctatum. The wind almost knocked over this other blooming one over here. Stay. So, um, this is this is the new growth of a Certipodium punctatum. This is kind of a smaller plant, and. Um, it's staying small. So I don't know if the idea is incorrect. Um, it has bloomed for me and it looks like Certipodium punctatum, um, but it doesn't seem to get any bigger than this, which is really bizarre. Uh, and I'll show you a full size one here in a moment. But so the, the first stage you'll typically see is this very pointy new growth coming out. And you can see it's got a very large base here. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. They sort of uh, over early on they sort of develop this big bulbous uh, base and then the roots come out and, and I'll show you that here in, in a moment as well um, uh, another thing that I want to show you while I'm thinking about it is so the old leaves fell off here and they leave these really nasty points like I, I could cut myself with these and I, and I have it, it's painful um, in fact, William Green was in my greenhouse uh, this past December, and we were joking that these are our, our guard plants, you know, um, and, and it's true. They, they will cut you. So this is the first stage. 
of your pseudopodium growth in springtime. The next phase is, is that separation, where the, the new growth and the new spike will sort of separate and, and, and make their own path, essentially. And I'm going to show you a full-size pseudopodium punctatum right now that I've got right here next to me. And it's, it's a little more advanced, but you, you'll get what I'm trying to say. Oh, boy. Ah. So this is the full-sized one. This is punctatum. Um, so you can see why. Let me see if I can get this here. Put it on my lap. You can see why um, this little guy seems like a miniature compared to the full-size version, okay? So again, if you don't have space, look at the size of this pot. If you don't have space for this thing, you know, this is just the bulb. The leaves are, are way, it looks like a palm tree, you know, come August or so. Um, and again, you can see how sharp these are. These are very, very painful. Um, but you can also see the divergence of the growths. So this is a single new growth. Um, and you can see and you can see from the single new growth, we have the new bulb coming up, the center one, the smaller one. These are the leaves developing in the bulb. And then you have what kind of looks like, at least early on, is asparagus. The asparagus are the flower spikes. So this particular new growth has two spikes coming out, which is awesome. Um, and so that's a very happy plant. You can also see that this is dirt. This is my sand and peat mix, 50-50 mixture. Uh, and this Certipodium punctatum loves it. I'm going to see if I can tilt this here a little bit. And maybe show you guys some of the new roots coming out. Can you see them popping out here? And um, they're going they're going to go straight down into the media, and they will wrap around and create a huge ball. And so, as you can imagine, this is pretty heavy. Like I said, it's a huge space hog, but you can see these the size of the bloom spike. It's going to be humongous. I'm going to put this back down. So the next phase is for the actual spike, the flowers to open up. <clears throat> this is Certipodium holstii. Just notice it's got a bunch of little ants. Um, and you can see the new growth here. But more importantly, this is the first bloom spike on this guy. Let's see if I can get him in the camera shot here. And I'm really hoping the colors come out well so that you can see the colors are this sort of vivid, um, a very vivid yellow and a sort of bronze patterning on the side and this intense, uh, intensely red, sort of a brick red. Uh, the, the side lobes of the, of the lip are coming up and around. And even the, the flower bracts themselves, so these are actually not the flowers right here, these are just the bracts and they're just as colorful. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get this down here. And I really hope the color shows up well. Um, for my screen, it doesn't look that great. I'm hoping that once I upload this, this will look nice. Um, but in any case, it's lightly fragrant. And again, you can see flower spike here and the new growth here. Another thing that I want to show you, the, the really only pest problem that I have with these guys is thrips. Every single spring on the new growths, the new leaves specifically, is I will get these little, you'll see little white dots. Um, and as embarrassing as it is, I'm going to see if I can show them to you on the camera here on the new growth. You can see the little white dots. It looks like right up in here and you know it is what it is um, I hit them with heavy chemicals I have no problems nuking bugs 
Um, I know some of you are not super excited about that, and you can use whatever thrip formula you have. But uh, I like to knock, knock them down early. Uh, in fact, tonight I'm going to come back down and hit these guys again, all of them, to knock these thrips down. They can do major damage to your new growth. Um, and they just proliferate. One day they're there, one day they're not there, and then suddenly they are there, and it's really frustrating um, to see the, the, the leaves expanding and you have these little yellow dots, and it's frustrating. But, you know, one of those things you got to deal with with this particular genus. I'm putting this guy down here and leaning him on that giant punctatum. Let's see if I can peel off one of these old bracts. And it's it's very hard, very painful. Watch out for this. Um, the other one, the other blooming one that I want to talk to you about is this guy here. So this is a St. Ledgerianum. This is one of the few um, epiphytes. These guys do actually grow in trees. So I have this one in a, a mix of, I have large grade bark on the bottom and then a, a layer of sphagnum on top to really hold that moisture in. And, you know, these, like I said, these guys are getting blasted with Texas sun for all summer, all summer long. It's 105 degrees and in the shade. So when you're getting blasted with sun, the roots dry out pretty quick. So you, you got to kind of come up with a way uh, to at least I did to come up with a way to, to keep moisture around the root zone for a little longer Let me see if I can pick this guy up for you here So Again We have one growth here and From that growth I got the new leaves full of thrips uh, and the spike here and this single spike gives a bunch of flowers that are about as tall as I am as I'm sitting down. So uh, I'm trying to figure out how to show this to you. I think what I'm going to do is instead of trying to bring the plant to you, I'm going to bring you to the plant. So let's see if I can turn this here and get a... A good zoom in here and again I'm, I'm really hoping that the color shows up um, this is a similar color um, but you can see that it's just this huge bouquet um, you know maybe a foot a foot and a half wide and from from the base of where the flower spike comes out to appear is, is probably about two feet tall and then there's another <clears throat> a couple of feet to the base so this particular plant is blooming at about maybe three feet tall and again once you get the the growths coming up and and the huge huge palm frond looking leaves they take up a lot of space <clears throat> not a whole lot of scent on this one but again it, it's that sort of sort of golden petals and and the the, the sepals the dorsal sepal and the lateral sepals are, are sort of that same golden color, but overlaid with uh, um, a brick red modeling. And the side lobes come up, and they're not quite as brick red as this holstei that I showed you, um, which is just this really vibrant red next to the, the other colors is really cool. But this is still absolutely amazing. And then hopefully you can see in a little bit, pick out some of the patterns and see see the green on top of the anther cap there it's it's a pretty intense green and yeah so those are my blooming sort of podiums and a few of the other ones as well that are not blooming so for winter care um, I typically give these guys a very hard dry winter rest you know these plants that you're looking at now have seen water, maybe I hit them with water once or twice, but uh, not not really a whole lot since November. <clears throat> so I give them a, a, a hard dry rest, a lot like my catacetums, and they seem to do just fine. Um, I haven't really heard any guidance um, one way or the other when to start watering, so I just kind of treat them like 
catacetums, I wait till the roots get a little longer. Not quite as long as catacetums, so catacetums you want to be like four inches long before you start to water. These guys, you know, once the roots are this long, I'll start hitting them with water every now and then. Um, and and that's, that's pretty much it. A, a lot of this is trial by, by fire, um, and it's worked out well for me. And I want to pass that along to everyone out there in case you're thinking about getting sort of podiums. Uh, one of the ones that does not get a hard winter rest is uh, polyphylum. Uh, Certipodium, Certipodium andersonii was wrapped into polyphylum, uh, and polyphylum, I'm sorry, is actually now aurea. So Andersoni, andersonii, polyphylum were separate entities uh, taxonomically. They were merged, and now they're aurea. <clears throat> so Certipodium aurea uh, does not get a hard winter rest. You treat them like your other cat lids, or you just kind of, you reduce water, but you keep hitting them with water. Uh, once or twice a week, all winter long. That one is also a terrestrial. Uh, one of the few people who actually sells these guys here in the United States is Stephen Moffat. Uh, I would say most of my collection is from him, um, and he had he had some really great tips. Um, specifically, he told me not to give Certipodium aurea. Uh, that really hard winter rest and you treat it like a cat layup and that's worked out for well for me In fact, I had asked him that when I was giving it a hard winter rest and it wasn't looking right. So uh, You know, thanks to him for for the tips that he's given me over the years and Yeah, you know, let me know if you have any questions or um, I, I bet I, I'm anticipating the most common question is hey, where do I get these guys and I say hey, I don't know uh, Stephen Moffat has most of them I'm going to self these guys, and so hopefully I'll have flasks maybe in a year from now and or a couple of years from now and try and get these guys on the market a little more. But anyway, uh, talk to you later. Bye.